Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Arctic. Today, we're jumping back into some more FTB skies. And boy, we're going to be going into the sky today, and we're going to be getting into some more Batania. Hopefully, you guys are ready. So today, we're going to be diving even deeper into the realm of this FTB skies mod pack. And uh, when I say deeper into the realm, we're going to be getting deeper into the end game of the mod pack. So uh, we're already down to the second from the last tier. Uh, and we've already completed this section here where we've gotten all the ether gas and everything else we need. Now, today is going to be heavily focused on completing a couple of tasks. We need more swift alloy, which we're going to need a little bit of elemental craft to sort of get started. Um, the Terra still, which we're going to, I guess, dabble in a little bit more Batania. And then, of course, space, uh, getting Desh. And that should grant us the everlasting <laughs> guilty bull. This thing is crazy. Now, believe it or not, elemental craft we may not have to get into for this particular tasks. It, it looks like we have swift alloy here uh, that we got from the end. So that's an immediate submit. I didn't even realize we already had all that. So really, I guess today we're gonna be focusing on, I guess, going to space with Ad Astra. Um, now, Batania, that's simple. We've already done that. That's just going to be a matter of making sure we have enough mana for this. Uh, and uh, you can also find a little bit of Terra still in space, but you're going to need a lot of mana for this. So we're also going to dabble a little bit in uh, more mana generation and upgrading our current mana generation. Now, for all the Batania setup stuff, I'm currently working on easy villagers because what I want is to utilize cakes as a means of... Uh, setting up automated mana. So I'm slowly but surely getting there. Now there's an interesting thing that I am going to need to set up to get this to work. Um, now, I don't want to have a infinite amount of cakes just being produced. Now, we're probably going to use up all of our cakes, but uh, I don't want to have it constantly producing and using up all of our emeralds, if at all possible. So what we can actually do is uh, we can say, well, once it hits a certain threshold, then cut it off. And that's what a detector is going to do. And we can set this up on our exporter. So right here, we'll have our exporters hooked up. Uh, and let's say these are our cakes for right now. And then here on the back, I'm going to place in these detectors. And uh, what we can do is we can set this. I want to set this to have a redstone mode only work with a redstone signal. So let's set these both to only work with a redstone signal. And then we'll tell this right here, emit a signal when it's at a certain amount. We don't want that. Emit a signal when under an amount is what we want. Uh, and we can set that mount to, I don't know, uh, 1,028. That just seems like a good number. And then cake, we'll toss that in there. And, and so that's what will happen. So these will stay running and this will work uh, and we'll do it for both. Um, and then now this should work. So once we get this cable hooked in and we get these hooked into the network, um, that should function. Um, so let's go ahead and get our villagers in. We have our flax number two and our flax villager here. And then we'll just set this to flax to emerald. That's a pretty sick, uh, thing. And then just load up our flax and we're ready to go, right? So start importing. Now these, I can always have it sending flax. That is not a problem at all. It's going to always be sending flax and always filling up our emeralds and keeping our emeralds nice and stocked up. And then over here, let's get our cake going. We have cake one and cake two. And then we'll set that to cakes. And this is going to be all for Batania, by the way. Now, outside of that, I did get snowballs up and automated. So we have our sink and I have my blast chiller and you put the ball cast inside with just this bronze uh, and that'll make snowballs for you. And I just have that slowly going in and it's going into a compact drawer over here. So a nice little functional storage drawer. And uh, that is keeping it nice. And I should put that actually in a compacting drawer. That would probably work out a little bit better. Uh, I did set up the auto craft though for uh, the snowballs. Now, all of this leads me to this point. Um, wow, okay, so things are gonna get a little interesting from here. I need to craft some runes because I'm gonna be making the Kekamoris flower. And so this requires pixie dust, which we have tons of, but it also requires this rune of gluttony. Now, the Rune of Gluttony uh, it requires the Winter Rune and a Fire Rune, but the Winter Rune also requires water in that. So it's like a multi-step process to be able to actually make the Gluttony. But I do have it set up and ready to go. So for right now, I'm going to try eight. I'm going to see if eight will work. But these are what the new Mana Spreaders look like. 
Um, now, as you can see, they are a little full because we don't, well, we don't have enough mana leaving our mana pools here just yet. Uh, but that is going to change very, very soon. Now, should I use these also for mana gin? Um, I don't know. They, it takes a lot of them to make a substantial amount of mana, and I still think that Kekamoris is going to be the best way to do it. By the way, on the rune crafting, I did have to change this, and I think 16 tick delay is a little bit better when using multiple runes, uh, because this was still allowing too much time, too much time for it to be picking up that fire rune when it was initially placing it. Now, another thing I'm going to set out to do is make the Terra still a little bit less expensive to make, and that's where this Gaia agglomeration plate comes into play. Now, we've already killed the Gaia Guardian, so we need to just make a rune of teleportation. Very simple to make that, and we already have runes of energy. Now, the Lapis is basically just a Lapis version of all of the other materials we've made. Uh, so we can take Mana Lapis and drop it in, and we'll get this Lapis. So we need three blocks of it to craft, and then four blocks of it to actually make the plate. So that's quite a bit of Lapis. Thankfully, though, you can do this all in block form. We're also going to need five Dream Rock as well. So we'll get the five Dream Rock, and then we also can drop this into a Mana Pool. Actually, does it need to go? It needs to actually go into a special Mana Pool. We need a Terra Catalyst. So this is the most expensive part. This is going to require three Terra still to get started and Shimmer Rock. So almost have everything ready to go. So this is the Terra Catalyst. So it does require the Alchemy Catalyst. And there we go. Hey, look at that. Batania completed. Uh, kind of. Um, so the Terra Catalyst then goes underneath a Mana Pool. Just like that. And just like any other Catalyst, we are able to drop this in and get the materials we need. Now we can actually upgrade this plate uh, and we should have everything we need. So let's go ahead and grab this and this will make making Terra still. I know we made three of them, but uh, it'll make making the Terra still a little bit cheaper. I was looking at the recipes and just judging by this alone, uh, we get this slightly cheaper. I mean, it is almost an eighth of a mana pool now where before it was a, it would be a half of a mana pool. So I'd say that's significantly cheaper. So there we go. Yeah, it seems to be working. Now, to be able to see the uh, actual things happening, you can see the mana being transferred to the spark, even though the spark's invisible. Um, and it is working. And so now let's go ahead and get our cakes crafted and uh, let's get that mana really flowing so we can make this Terra still um, and maybe even set up a little mana battery. Boy, crafting this is incredibly fast now. <laughs> I have all four of these pools with sparks on them. And so this is rocking and rolling. All right, uh, I think I've waited long enough. Well, let's do that cake, like I said. Just putting everything in here, the final touches, and boop, there we go. Can toss these now, and we can make all eight of them. These flowers are, uh, are kind of interesting, to say the least. So I'm gonna go ahead and place them right here. They should be able to reach, uh, to be able to tell, of course, I can use my wand and I can make sure they're linked to the appropriate mana spreader. I might, I might still make two a piece. Uh, maybe have two per cake or four per cake, two per spreader. We'll see if we can keep up with the cake demands because the cake demands are pretty, pretty high, I think on these. So if I get this connected, make sure these are all connected up. Let's get the cake going because the cake is actually going to pop up right here. And there we go. So the cake should be there, and these things should eat off of them, thus supplying it. Oh, that's more than enough. Yeah, two is, is more than enough. Oh, I think we need to upgrade these mana spreaders even further. Oh, yeah, this is uh, this is going to be too much cake, I think, for these even these mana spreaders. Oh, boy, the mana is about to really start to kick in. Yeah, before this is even able to get very far, I'm going to actually just go ahead and grab all these. And I'm going to upgrade them to the Gaia tier, which is the highest tier mana spreaders that we have available to us. So it looks like this just requires the Gaia shards, which is kind of cool. This is Botanic Editions. Uh, and in my opinion, the Botanic Editions is kind of taking a little bit of the boss grind out of Botania is what it seems like it's doing. And I really like that. These are the max tier mana spreaders, I think. I don't think the, there's any others that are added um, in this pack. Uh, but these look super cool. You can see them right here. Uh, and they're gonna, they, they should rip that mana way faster than everything else we've been using. Like once we get this linked up and get these plugged in, oh man, these are gonna just start ripping the mana. Like they're still full as you can see, but 
That's that should be sending out way more mana than normal. Now, I think to make this a little bit more efficient, I'm going to be taking the logs that I have and we're going to be turning that into charcoal instead of using our coal. Our coal is actually not keeping up. Um, so if I just make charcoal and we just send that, we can use this charcoal over here to actually keep all of our uh, endo flames powered. Um, so I think that is going to be a great alternative to the regular coal that we're using. Don't want to really use that for this when we can use it for this. I'm actually going to set this up a little bit different than what I was initially doing. I'm going to need way more of these in order for this to run faster. So we'll just hook cables up to it. Now, while I wait for cakes to build up and everything, and of course our mana pools are filled right now. Uh, now, while I wait for all of that to work, let's get into Ad Astra. Now, there's going to be uh, probably multiple parts to this because Ad Astra, well, it's a space mod. And uh, we have to kind of get into a few things before we can really dive first into it. So Ad Astra, to actually make rocket fuel, which is one of the biggest components of this, well, we're going to need a fuel refinery. The fuel refinery requires steel. Steel's pretty easy. We get a hammer and we can craft this stuff down. It's super simple. However, what it uses is oil. And, well, we're in a skyblock, so how are we going to get oil? Um... Well, there's a couple of different ways, and, uh, well, it, one of them kind of requires RNG and, and finding a particular biome. Another one, well, requires a bee. Now, honestly, I would do this bee, but it requires the same thing that we'd have to do for the other method. Um, and that is, we'd have to find these biomes, and then we'd have to create a fishing pool, fish in it, and hope that we actually get this oily bee while fishing. I think an auto fisher might be able to do it as well, I have no idea. Uh, but this is kind of a problem. Uh, so I think the other method might be the best way to go about doing that. And that is using another fluid laser drill, which we're very familiar with. And, uh, I'm definitely familiar with and a gray lens in an ocean biome of some sort. We just have to find an ocean biome. So with all of the tools in hand, and that includes the replaceable scaffolding, which is from Cyclic, which is an angel block. I'm just showing it. And at this point, I'm now showing just millions of ways of placing random blocks in the sky. This is just one of many, uh, but because uh, I also know there's an angel block actual mod in here. Uh, but yeah, we have everything we need. We have all of the stuff uh, to get this up and running. Nice speed upgrades. I'm actually going to use flux points for all of these as we do have that automated now. So it's just a simple thing and I'll, I'll show you how to use the configurator. Um, but yeah, I should have everything. I just now have to fly around and hope that I find an ocean biome. Well, there's a beach uh, and there's a cold ocean right here. So I am in a cold ocean biome that's actually not too far from the base. So let's get this placed. And you know what? Since it is so close, <laughs> I want to try and line it up with this. And then also I did forget to grab some uh, bricks to actually place down. So uh, I, I don't want to place a machine in this block. That might pose a little bit of a problem. But as you can see, it does take the place of the block. It's actually kind of a cool little thing to set up there. All right, so I just need a little bit of space for this. It's actually not that crazy because we've already set this up before. So fluid and then, of course, all the lasers going into it. Now, the configurator, this is where things are kind of cool. So if, you if you're going to be placing a lot of flux points, right, get your first one ready to go and make sure you get it selected, right? And then for this one set to priority negative one, let's just set that to priority zero. So it's just back to normal. Uh, we'll take this and we'll actually sh uh, cut copy by shift clicking. And then all of the other ones that we place down like this, ooh, or accidentally place the, this one down the wrong way, uh, we can just right click on these. And now we've copied and pasted those settings. So you don't have to go into the menus over and over and over again, which we're all, fam all too familiar with. Uh, let's go ahead and put that laser lens in here. And then oil, I think, has a height requirement. So it needs to be between 20 and 60 in order for it to work. So we got to click this bad boy all the way down to below 60. And there we go. That is plenty. And now this should, once upgraded, we got all the lasers upgraded. I even need to upgrade the main part. To be honest, actually, I probably don't because we're going to have plenty of oil. There's already 200 built up. Yeah, I, I would say this is going to be more than enough since it's really just going to be used at the moment for producing fuel. There we go. So we're just about there. So let's go ahead and head back to the base after, almost forgot, chunk loading this particular area. 
I hope the whole machine is actually within this one chunk. Uh, F3G? Is it inside of the chunk? Uh, yes, it is inside the chunk. Oh, nice. So to get started with Ad Astra outside of the oil, um, I've kind of built a little bit of an area here to place down these machines that we're going to need. So one of them is, of course, the NASA workbench. This is one of the main ones. Now, this hammer recipe is going to be something that I'm going to be using a lot. I'm probably going to need a bunch of these. Um, I could, you know, process them in a, mach a machine, but uh, for right now, I'm going to be doing it this way. So let's go ahead and just hammer a bunch of these steel plates. Look at that. So uh, now... The machines, the fuel refinery, that's one of in the uh, one of the important ones, right? Because that's how we get our fuel. Um, an oxygen loader is how we're actually going to go about getting the oxygen that we're going to need. Uh, is this the only way to make rods? No, it's definitely not. There we go. Uh, and the oxygen loader is very important. Um, now, this is going to need water pumped into it, but we have plenty of methods of doing that. Uh, and it's going to require these tanks. We do have a netherite can, which I believe holds uh, a bunch, a bunch of oxygen. So we should have no problem as we've already gotten that really nice item there. But yeah, the NASA workbench. This is going to basically say, hey, uh, and tell us what all parts we actually need. And this is gonna be the crafting bench uh, for our spaceship. And so we, this is where we're actually gonna craft the spaceship that we're gonna go to space with. This mod is pretty easy to get into. I'd have to say it's, it's definitely simple. It's on the simple side of things. And uh, the, the main thing that you're going to need outside of this is just prepping for going to space, right? So uh, let me kind of explain and get these machines up and running. So this is the fuel refinery and this is the oxygen loader that I was talking about. So I have the water going in and oxygen is being produced. Now to simply automate the refinery, all I have to do is place down my oil tank and just flip this lever and that's gonna start to fill up with oil and there's our fuel already. Uh, pretty straightforward. Now, the part uh, that's going to be a little bit more difficult is just crafting all the components for our rocket. Now, we're also going to need a spacesuit. Uh, so, we can't wear this. We're going to need a spacesuit. And, well, this is pretty lame on its own going to space. We definitely want to put some enchants on this. Funny thing, when we run with this suit, shoot, our arm just stretches forward. <laughs> it's so goofy. So I'm down underground and uh, well, we're about to start enchanting. And now as you can see, I've exchanged all my bookshelves with in shelves because at this point going to the end, I already had these in shelves. Um, now, th I think the normal progression is going from normal chest to like hell shelves and then to these. But there's a little fancy thing that you can do uh, called infusion and you need a certain level of uh, enchanting, a certain level of Eterna, Quanta, and Arcana in order to actually get infusion to happen. And it says requires at least. So it's not crazy to figure this out, but you do need at least 30% and uh, you also need at least 22.5 on this. And we have all of that right now for infusion. I don't know if I happen to have a hell shelf. It looks like I do have the ability to make hell shelves. But what I'd really like to make eventually is this enchantment library. This thing is pretty darn cool, and I can actually show how this infusion works. So we have enough, and as you can see right here for the 80, even though it said I think it cost uh, 45, but the infusion, there we go. We should be able to infuse this, and uh, that's put together. And so we would just need, what, four of these in order to do this. Now back to our regular scheduled enchanting. Um, so inside here, we can uh, kind of roll through. As you can see, the enchantments are gonna be pretty crazy. Now, I don't recommend removing the enchantments on here uh, through this means with the grindstone. I recommend uh, using the industrial foregoing method of stripping them off. Uh, that way you can keep them. Uh, but for right now, I am looking for not blast protection, but just like regular protection if we can get it. Uh, any Anything honestly would be nice. Let's start this. Now, red things, so you see life mending. This is actually gonna take our health to repair our gear. Um, and it's also not gonna be remove, removable uh, through this means. Uh, and so if you wanna remove a red one, Apotheosis actually gives you a way to do that. Um, and you have to make the prismatic cobweb to do this. And an anvil, uh, let's see. 
if I actually used more than one hand to type, I could probably type a little bit better. Uh, so there we go. And uh, now specifically on this piece of gear, right? We can put that there and you can see it just removed that. And I think that's perfect. Honestly, the thing we need the most on these pieces of gear though, is probably going to be unbreaking. So I think this gear is pretty good with the enchants that I have on it, besides the life min, which I'm gonna remove. Uh, Gloom is meh, uh, and then air affinity is a must. I love air affinity. That is gonna be super, super nice. So I definitely have to grit that cobweb. And we are gonna remove off life min. The life min is pretty awful. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it might not be too bad with our current setup, but life min will mend with our health, and that just sounds bad. Now, Vitality is going to give us uh, more health. As you can see, now we have gr a green health bar. So that means we now have four full health bars. And I haven't even I haven't even gotten in to the Bobbles mod. That's pretty crazy. So let's get this done. Let's get our rocket crafted. We have just about everything else ready to go. Uh, the only thing we're going to need to do is make sure our spacesuit is filled with oxygen, which is by putting it in here. And uh, there was that other tank, right, that had oxygen. Let's go ahead and take it and make sure it can be filled up with oxygen. And so that is a whole other container. And uh, I think uh, we're just about ready, right? I just need to grab out all of the steel blocks and get all of the wing components and then engines and all of that stuff crafted up, which believe me is actually, it's pretty simple. It's, it's just a lot of iron and steel. Now all the components together, we should be just about ready to go. We do have to put them together, I guess. And there we go. Tier one rocket complete. And yes, <laughs> it does look pretty darn cool being held up by you. Uh, it is rocking, which is also sort of terrifying. Now, uh, one last thing, we are going to need a launch pad. Now, if you're going into space, by the way, with uh, and, and you plan on using a rocket to come back, make two launch pads. You're gonna need one to launch from and then another one to launch from on the planet. So if we place it down, you can see it does have a nice little platform. And then our rocket goes right on top of that. And there we go. We have everything pretty much set up and ready to go. This is our space station or our launch pad. And uh, well, you can shift right click to access the inventory and you need to make sure to give it, I would say three buckets of fuel to get the inventory nice and filled up and make sure you bring three buckets with you. These are inventory spaces. It's kind of like a chest. And then the other part is to, well, to also make sure, like I said, you have the fuel, make sure you have the launch pad, and then you just right click to get in. And then we're just about ready. Now inside my inventory, before we head out into space, I just want to make sure that I have a checklist and we have everything ready to go. Oxygen, make sure you're also wearing your space suit. That's important. I have a stabilized warp, warp scroll that we're actually going to use to teleport back here. Um, and then I have my charge porter, which is a way to get back. And other than that, we should be good. I don't need any of this other mumbo jumbo. We should be clear for liftoff. And yeah, so three, two, one, liftoff. And yes, it is. I love this. This is so cool. And we even get a countdown here. We're, we're in nice F5, so we can see everything going on. But we're launching off and going to a new planet. And as you've seen, this is just super simple to get into. Um, this mod is quite uh, quite a simple space mod. There's, <laughs> there's our power, our windmills up in the air that we just passed. Oh, boy. And this is going to pull up a really cool menu, a radial menu. Now, this is just tier one, so we really don't get to go very far. Basically, the moon is really where we're going to be heading. And so you can see the solar system. We have the end is another way that you can, this is another way you could have gotten to the end. Um, probably one of the easier ways to get to the end, honestly, uh, outside of Batania, because it takes so much. But under Earth, we have moon, and we are just gonna click moon, and we are launching to moon. Be careful, whenever we're landing, we have to hold down the space bar. It'll prompt us and everything. But we have to hold down the space bar Otherwise, we will encounter some issues. So you're going to see warning. And then when I hold down the space bar, it is actually going to slow us down. And so we are, we got to keep an eye on our, our distance to the ground and our actual speed that we're going. 
And there we go. We are on the moon. And we're in a slower, slower descent so we don't crash. And safely land. Very nice. Very nice. Um, so here I am. Oh, I'm in a spectator for some reason. That's very weird. I don't, I think that's a bug. There we go. I guess I, oh, that is a bug. That's gotta be a bug. No, oh, nope. I just hit the wrong button. That's right. I forgot. I have a free cam. Um, <laughs> that's so goofy. Oh goodness. This is how, this is how we get those, uh, lovely shots. Uh, so yeah. Anyways, let's get this out. Okay, so we got a rocket back and we're on the moon. What do we do now? Well, fight aliens. That is one thing that we can do. Uh, but we are looking for Desh, specifically Desh. And we are going to need a bunch of it. One of the best things we can do to get Desh is to go into these areas. Now, I don't really have much of a weapon on me outside of my book here. And my sword. I guess my sword is... A pretty darn good weapon but yeah these little areas are pretty cool um and sometimes you can find loot in them this is I, I think a village more or less but there are like straight up dungeons down here that do have full-blown chests this is a pretty cool area man i want some of these materials this would be a great place to clear the materials out yeah these are all villagers so yeah outside of that these guys are the ones that you want to worry about yeah these guys are kind of a pain let's get rid of them Wow, we annihilate. Is that something that's part of our armor? That is raising how crazy... I mean, we have projectile protection that's really in really high. Oh my goodness. But yeah, there are other structures. I need to find one. And we should find one of their structures. Uh, if not, just mining for Desh is a great way to find Desh. Also, cheese or... This is great stuff too. So these village towers, they have looted them, and yeah, there you go. There's some dash. Ooh, even a launch pad. Oh, that's nice. It looks like there is some custom loot in here. Up on the very top? Yes. There we go. So we get cheese and dash. This is a great way of just finding dash, honestly. Soul torches are, by the way, are the only type of torches that will work here, and like campfires and glowstone will work. But normal torches will fizzle out because, well, we're in space. So this right here is kind of interesting. So right here was that uh, village thing that we had seen, but right next to it, I think this is actually the dungeon, the ones that are kind of underground, and you'll find quite a bit of dash throughout this area. Of course, there's a stairwell that takes you pretty far down, but this area, I believe, is full of hostile mobs, so be kind of careful. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and loot this. Let's see. Yeah, this is definitely the dungeon area. So if we head down, we should find, yep, all kinds of spawners, craziness happening. I think it's best to try and break the spawners as best we can. But yeah, this is the, actually the main dungeon area. This is just chaos. This is why we needed unbreaking, by the way. And yeah, look at that. Oop. Just break everything. This is, you know, they, they, we don't need things spawning all over the place. We don't need anything from these guys. What is in here? Ooh, space stuff. <laughs> Just so many of these things, like starfish guys. All right, you guys can go. Let's make it a little quieter in here. Oh, goodness. Little, little starfish is after us. So yeah, we get ice shards, which are kind of nice. Um, Golden apple. Very cool, very, very cool. Uh, this one had a space painting, which is a custom painting you can get via this area. And here is the moon globe. This is how you get the moon globe. And then, of course, in here we get even more shards, another space painting. Uh, what's in here? Stasis, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then, yeah, just regular loot and raw desh. Oh, you can't be this. They have a desh room just full of desh or raw ore. That's perfect. That's what we need is just more dash. This whole place is definitely a labyrinth. So be weary. A lot of stuff spawns here. And it's just hallway after hallway after hallway. Oh, I love this. This whole area is full of tinted glass. And a tree. And well, um, it's a dead tree now. They have no tree no more. <laughs> I took their tree. What are they going to do without it? I don't know. 
a lost civilization. I'm sure they'll, I'm sure they'll find a way to survive. I'm sure. Now, of course, another great way to find Dash as well, just to go caving. I'm caving right now to try and grind up as much as possible. You know what's crazy that I see off in the distance? The unlimited lava source. Oh my gosh. You could totally set up a create pump here. That's more than enough lava for infinite lava. Oh my gosh. And this whole time, I've been thinking I'm going to have to make a giant reservoir for it. No, we can get it right here on this planet, right here on the moon. That's a perfect, that's a great idea. So I think at this point, after collecting all of this, this is the perfect time to use our stabilized scroll. So what I should be able to do is shift click and I've recorded my location. And now when I use this scroll, it should teleport us here or so I think it does. Scroll's already bound to a location. Oh, oh, we right click the ground and it makes a portal. No freaking way. Oh my, that is cool. Does it just do it every time? Oh. That is sick. And you can just break the portal? Oh, I love, oh, okay. I love this stabilized warp scroll. Okay, location is set, by the way. Scro oh my gosh. So we bounded to the location and now we can summon this portal to go anywhere. That is pretty cool. I think it works cross-dimensionally. Uh, I haven't really tested, but uh, I do know how to get back here, thankfully. But yeah, we're, we're coming back to this lava. Now, I do have enough of everything. So at this point, I guess we can go ahead and head back. Now, you could use the launch pad to launch yourself back, but I'm just going to use my charge porter. And uh, that is super sick. Okay, man, all of these mods combined is really just blowing my mind. Now to get the most out of my ore, I'm just going to toss this into a squeezer. And Squeezer grants you eight raw dash per squeeze. It is kind of crazy um, how much you actually get from this mechanical squeezer. I would say this is one of the best ways to process the raw ores. So, I mean, at this point, I mean, we have just about everything to do. I mean, I, I submit the dash and now I just uh, unload all the stuff that we got. Also, we're going to have to find a place for this. I can't like go with like not having one of these somewhere. Um, this thing is super big. I wasn't expecting it to be that large. <laughs> it works just like the supplementaries one. That's kind of cool. We're going to find a place to put all these for sure. Um, but, uh, what, the only thing left is for me to just grind out the Batania Terra still. So now at this point, I have expelled all of my mana, but I have a feeling this is going to fill up incredibly fast. And, uh, well, in between episodes, that is definitely going to be the case. So I think next episode, we will unlock the everlasting mana pool. And that thing is pretty nice. It is going to basically replace all of this. We'll have unlimited Terra still at that point. Honestly, you do have to kind of go through these mods to their max and completion before you get items like these. But this has a little bit more use as we can actually convert blocks and we can do a lot of cool things with an everlasting uh, mana pool. So... With that being said, I hope you enjoyed today's episode with that exploration and going into space. There's a lot more of that to come, of course. And uh, of course, getting into the depths of Botania and even exploring the new botanical additions, uh, which has very little documentation and uh, absolutely zero videos on the internet, apparently, uh, as I was trying to find out more information outside of the Botania book. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did and enjoyed it, click that subscribe button if you haven't already and ring that beautiful notification bell so you'll be notified when I publish a new video just like this one. Also, click that like button if you did enjoy. And if you didn't enjoy, well, there's a dislike button. I just won't ever see those statistics. So anyways, guys, thank you so much. Comment something down below if you enjoyed. And it's time to thank the supporter of today's video. And that huge thanks is going to go to Noah Gears. Thank you so much, by the way for supporting me over on YouTube with the YouTube premium memberships. Be sure to check that out. It is the join button and become a member today if uh, you have the means of doing so, uh, as it does help support this channel in a tremendous way. Uh, and guys, I just want to say thank you so much uh, for, for just watching the videos. I, it does mean a lot to me that you guys watch 
and uh, just take time to comment and everything. Thank you guys so much. It does mean a lot to me, more than you will ever know. Guys, thank you so much. Of course, I'll see you in the next episode. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. To infinity and beyond. Oh, boy. Uh, I, I wasn't ready for this. I want to go. I want to leave. Let me out. Let me out.